What's up everybody? Today we're going to be looking at a trick which I call the cocky chosen card and it's based on the automatic reversal from the expert card technique book. So this is just based on the automatic reversal from the expert card technique book and what I've done is added a story to it and something to add a reasoning behind the technique and how it's used. So what we're going to do is just sort of go through the original technique and you can pick it up from there. So what you do is you take a deck of cards and you say to spectator, there are four types of cards in a deck. Do you know what type they are? They normally say your hearts, your spades, your clubs, your diamonds. So yeah, that's good. However, there's four more, especially when it comes to magicians. First of all, there's your normal playing cards, which every card is normal. The second type of card is a chosen card and that was done by the spectator. So they can either pick a card face down or face up. It doesn't make any difference. So for this example, we're just going to use the Ace of Clubs. And that is a chosen card, that's freely chosen, and the Spectator does that. So the Ace of Clubs, that is now a chosen card. That's been upgraded from a normal playing card to the chosen card. So what we'll do, we'll take that and we'll just lose that in the middle of the deck. The third card is the Ambitious card. And that is a Magician's favourite. So no matter where you put the card, if you do a dribble or if you do any cuts or anything like that, the card always appears to the top. And when you look, it's a seven of clubs, not the ace of clubs, which is your card. Because obviously this is called the ambitious card. So on top of the ambitious card, the next card is the not so ambitious card. And that is the second from the top. So you've got the ambitious card, not so ambitious card. So those are your four types of card. Well, what about the chosen card? What's that got to do with anything? As we said, the first one is normal playing cards, which all of them are. The third one is the ambitious card, so no matter when you dribble or if you do any cuts or anything like that, the card always appears to the top. And the not so ambitious card, second from the top. The second type of card, the one that you chose, is the chosen card. Sometimes it likes to get a bit cocky, so when it's in the deck, what it'll do, it'll flip itself over. So I'll be able to flick through the deck here, and when we find a card, that card is face down. So then we take that card, and that is the Ace of Clubs, and that is the Cocky Chosen card. So that's the card trick that I came up with, and it's very easy, all you need to do is a pinky break and also a Marlow Tilt, but we'll go through those anyway if you don't know them, and we'll go from there. So firstly, just sort of the pattern and the story that goes along with it, it's something that I come up with, and you can do something different if you like, or you can keep the same, but essentially you want them to make up a story where the chosen card gets lost in the deck and then all of a sudden that chosen card is now face up in the deck. So I just went with a cocky chosen card, saying there's four different types of cards and went with that. What you need to do is your cards, they can be a shuffle deck, they can be a borrowed deck, there's no particular order to them and also the card which the person picks is a free choice as well. You don't have to force a card, don't have to do anything with that. So once you have that, you're going to distract them, talking them saying, for example, with my routine, this is the chosen card, and this is the second type of card. It's been upgraded from a normal card to a chosen card. And while you're doing that, what you want to do is take your cards, push them over, just get a pinky break. The way I like to do it is hold it down by your side, just do a little push up, and grab that pinky break. And it's down there, you can hide it, so like that. Now, so you distract them with this card so they would notice you're doing that. So once you have your pinky break like that, what we're going to do is the Marlow Tilt. So basically, it looks like you're putting the card in the middle of the deck, whereas you're putting it the second from top. So to do that, the way that I do it is take the card like that and just sort of put it in there like that, and that causes some of the middle cards to push out. So that creates the illusion that it's going in the middle like you do with that. All you do, just push it in once, put it in there, square it up. So again, second from top, get your little pinky break. See, I'll put that in the middle of the deck, just like that. And obviously, there you go, there's a nine of diamonds back there. And then what you need to do is talk about the top card. So I like to say about the ambitious card, because a lot of people know that. So you can say, for example, you click your fingers, it jumps to the top, no matter what you do, put it in the middle, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure they've seen a magician before, they've seen the ambitious card done. So then what you do, the same as before, when you're distracting them, talking about this card, just do a little push off, get your pinky break, while it's down the side there so it's unnoticeable. 
because you're distracting them with this. And then what you want to do is talk about this, put that card face up and square up. So what I've done, I've got the pinky brick, take the card, square it up. And then now what I can do is I can lift the card up and I've got your double face card like that. So what you need to do, because angle specific, you need to hold it down like that so they can't see the back, otherwise you're going to flash and they're going to know. So what I find is if you're holding it down like that, they can see the top and you've also got your hand there. So when you're from the right, even if you go up so far, you wouldn't be able to see the bottom. Whereas if you're just sort of holding it like that, then you can see it easily. So you've got your cards like that. And next step what you want to do is the next card down is you need to turn that over using these two cards. So obviously when you had it down, just flip it over like that. Simple as that. So push up with your thumb, get the trip out there, flip over with the cards, push back down and square up. So it's just simple like that. And then you're holding these two cards, so it looks like one card, just flipping that card over. And then that's essentially the routine all done. So what you need to do is push that card off, put that together. So you can hold it like that if you wanted. Just sort of explain, oh, these are the two cards, or you can have it on top of the deck. So you have that card where it was, put them cards next to it, and hold it with the thumb like that. So you put them two cards on, hold it with thumb so you got your other hand free, so you can talk like that. And all you do, take that other card, push it on together, so you've got your two cards. So before, you had your cards like that. Now with that other card, it just looks like you've got the two cards and that's the way it's done. So you take those, put them together, turn it over, put that on top of the pack. So now your setup that you have is your top card is face down, your second card is face up, third card is face down. What I like to do is to go through the overall initial card trick, basically explain all these normal cards so you can show at the minute there's no overturn card. And I think that really helps to sell the effect. So you can basically go through all the cards. There's no cards turned over yet. The chosen card, I like to miss that one out because what I need to do is to shuffle these cards and lose that second card right into the middle of the pack. So I go onto the ambitious card and do the same again when I was doing the trick. So say, oh, you put the ambitious card in, you do a riffle shuffle, or you talk about sort of cutting the cards. And the first time, if you notice when I did the trick, I did a cut, so like that. So it looks like it's a swing cut. However, you just grab the bottom pack, chuck that down. This time, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take that and complete the cut. So that second from top card is now in the middle of the deck, and you've got all these other cards on top. So you can go back again to the ambitious card routine and basically say so what the ambitious card is, you put the card in the middle of the deck. You can do a dribble or you can do a shuffle. At that point, that's when you do the swing cut. Straighten it all up and that's the work all done. And then there's two different ways you can reveal it. I prefer the second one, which is the one which I use in the actual routine, but there's also this one. So you can go through and say, oh, there's the, the second type of card is a chosen card. Sometimes that card gets a little bit cocky and flips itself over in the deck. So what you can do is just sort of say, look, I'll go through the cards and that card is face up is your card, that is the cocky chosen card. So there's that way. Obviously you can put them on the table, you can find them out and it appears that way. The way I like to do it to give a bit more suspense is if you flip the cards face up, then when you're flicking through, you say, oh, there's one card there face down. So that must be the cocky chosen card. And I think that way it is a bit more visual as such. So instead of just sort of seeing all the playing cards like that, and then one card pop out, it's like, there you go, that's your card. This is showing that all cards are face up, apart from that one card, and that one card is your chosen card. I think that's a bit better, so you can sort of, when you're looking through, you can see, oh, it's one card face down. Surely that can't be that card. So that's my take on the automatic reversal, and that's the routine that I use for it. It's a nice simple routine and it's sort of it's quite good just to get people involved and tell a story. Because I think that a lot of the magic tricks that I prefer are the ones that tell a story and you can sort of go along with it and 
basically run along with the story and people get involved with it that way rather than just saying, oh look, I'll well, take your card, I'll just uh, put that in the middle, and then you can do that, flip that card, take that card with it, flip that, there we go, and that's your card. It's a bit boring, that, that's sort of the overall mechanics behind it, but you need to spice it up a bit and make it a bit different. Hope you enjoyed the video, and obviously with a shooting background like this, normally shoot the things in the studio, but with the, the issues that are currently ongoing, I happen to be in the house, so we just modified the bedroom a bit just so we can have a shoot in here. Hope you enjoyed the trick, so leave a comment below, tell us what you thought about it, if you're going to use it, if you're going to adapt it, and if anything else you want to see on the channel, just leave that in the comment below. And don't forget to give us a subscribe so you can see all the new videos when they come around. And until next time, see ya!